E-ink and E-paper have been synonymous with E-readers for a long time. But the latest from Yota Devices aspires to be much more than just a Kindle bolted to a smartphone. So let's see if it succeeds. I'm Michael Fisher with PocketNow's video review of the Yota Phone 2. The Yota Phone 2 is a very comfortable smartphone. It's just under 9mm thick, smooth like an old pencil case, and it eschews modern edginess in favor of a soothing, rounded design that reminds me of the old Nexus S. It's tall, but it's also narrow, making it very easy to use with one hand. Branding is tastefully confined to a small lower back tattoo, and casing penetrations are limited and logically grouped, with the speakers sharing a bay with the USB port and the volume rocker doubling as a SIM tray. Smart. Topping it all off beneath a single sheet of Gorilla Glass 3, the 5-inch AMOLED screen is plenty vibrant and, at Full HD, also plenty sharp. To see what really sets the new Yoda phone apart, you've got to turn to the back. Except there is no back, there's just another front. This is Gorilla Glass 3 as well, except here it bears a matte finish and protects an e-paper display, or EPD, that's both smaller and lower res than the front panel and offers 16 shades of grey instead of 16 million colors. It doesn't have a backlight, and like most e-paper screens, it also has a fairly low refresh rate. But in exchange for these sacrifices, Yota says it offers up to seven times more power efficiency than the main display, good for 18 hours of using maps or 100 hours of reading. And it's approximately four zillion times better than the AMOLED screen for reading in bright sunlight. Citation needed. That's all well and good, but what can you do on the backside besides reading? Well, pretty much anything you can do on the front side, really. Just swipe up to enable mirroring, flip the phone over, and voila, you're using Android on the EPD. Naturally, it's a much rougher experience than on the front side. I kept looking for ways to boost the contrast or somehow speed up the experience, but no such luck. Fortunately, Yoda thought of this and provided software specifically designed for the EPD. Yoda Panel offers simplified widgets for simple functions like telling the time or checking the weather, and the beauty of e-paper is that it only uses power when it's changing state. So a panel like this, with very few moving elements, is extremely energy efficient. The only thing more frugal is a screen that's entirely static, and that's where Yoda Cover comes into play. You can throw any graphic you want on the EPD to decorate it as you see fit, with no power penalty whatsoever. Notifications are displayed in a variety of eye-catching animations, and you can also send screenshots immediately from the front screen to the back with a simple swipe, handy for movie tickets, among other things. Yota's use of its extra canvas here is very creative, and in a field that can so often seem stagnant, it's also very refreshing. Even in the most conventional and predictable e-paper application, reading books, it excels. I devoured an entire novel on the Yodaphone's EPD in a single day, on a single charge, and it was the best reading experience I've ever had on a smartphone. Full stop. That's not to say there aren't rough spots. The custom software isn't the most intuitive, and it's also kind of inconsistent. Several times I've used the Yodaphone for extended periods without realizing that an old web page or calendar reminder is still stuck on the EPD, telling everyone around me that I'm late for my Anbo Jitsu match or whatever. It seems to flicker when refreshing notifications, which makes for an annoying desktop companion at times. And all the custom software is bound to slow down the Android update process. As you can see, we're still stuck on KitKat here, with no firm timetable for a lollipop update. The camera isn't bad, but unless you count the alternately funny and creepy EPD decorations that accompany it, it's also nothing really special. You're shooting with the stock Google Camera app, which is fine. Bright indoor lighting and daytime photos are also fine. They're fairly authentic and sharp enough, assuming you can get proper focus. Low light shots are prone to significant noise and color accuracy problems, but for what it's worth, I have seen worse. One bright point. Selfies are awesome, because you can use the EPD as a viewfinder, which means you can use the primary camera and its LED flash if you want. More camera samples in our full review at PocketNow. For all its innovation, the Yodaphone 2 is kind of uneven when it comes to the basics. 
The Snapdragon 800 processor is plenty capable of running 3D games and delivering a slick, stock Android experience, but there's a pretty bad keyboard lag that makes fast typing very frustrating. And that delay persists even if you install an alternate keyboard like SwiftKey, and even if you opt to use the EPD over the main display. Voice quality is also just okay. I tested the Yodafone 2 on AT&T over six days in Greater Boston, and I almost always wanted the earpiece to be louder. Same goes for the speakerphone and the included earbuds, but kudos to Yoda for tossing those in the box, at any rate. LTE support is confined to bands 3, 7, and 20 for now, so I was stuck on 3G for this review. The high point in performance comes in battery life, assuming you use the EPD to its full effect. If you totally ignore the backside and just use it as a typical Android smartphone, you can expect about four hours of screen on time with moderate use, and a bit more if you use Yoda Energy. Make the most of the e-paper, though, and you can expect a lot more. After I switched my browsing, tweeting, and reading to the backside, I hit almost eight hours of screen on time after 15 hours off the charger, and I still had 20% battery left. That's the day I read the whole novel on the phone. And then I recharged wirelessly, because of course this phone features Qi inductive charging. It's too cool not to. Is it cool enough, though, to justify its price tag? At press time, US carrier release details were still muddy, so for now, with an import price of 555 pounds sterling, that makes this an $845 smartphone. Yeah, the battery life can be awesome, but you make a lot of sacrifices to get it, and other smartphones offer similar power savings without as much compromise. So the Yodafone 2 isn't for most people, or even for every hardcore geek. There are just too many cheaper options that are both more practical and more consistent. For someone bored of the conventional or looking for a clever way to save on battery life, it'll be a cool, if extravagant, trinket. But the real market here is someone who loves reading. Someone who's always juggling their smartphone with their Kindle, Nook, or Kobo. For that person, the Yodafone 2 is the best combo since Percy and Mary Shelley. That's a narrow category of consumer, probably narrower than Yoda is gunning for, but it's the only one that I think is likely to make the most of this very special device. At least in this incarnation, at least at this price point. We've got more in-depth Yodafone coverage here on YouTube and at pocketnow.com. Stay tuned also for a look at how the e-paper display on the back of the phone works in an e-ink lesson next week. Till next time, this has been Michael Fisher with Pocket Now, Captain Two Phones on Twitter, reminding you that only gadgets should be two-faced. We'll see you next time.